say, so welcome this morning. <laughs> um, today I want to I wanna speak about living from the heart um, and not the, not the head, <laughs> if I can put it that way. Um, and it's, it's kind of a double message, but we, we're going to speak about that. So, um, you can go with me to Luke 24. Luke 24. Now, too many times I think we, we live from, from up here, you know, we, from our natural thinking, and we don't necessarily live from the place we, we should live from. <laughs> Or that God is trying to teach us to live from. Um, and I think also the way we grow maybe up in church, or there's a lot of things that factor into this. Um, I mean, some of this stuff I'm going to speak about today. Earlier, I mean, growing up as I, in Christianity, in my Christian walk, I've actually been, it's amazing that this is totally opposite what I've been taught. You know, uh, meaning, we're going to speak about here yeah, about like, you know, emotions and stuff like that. I remember, I was almost always warned against it. Like, no, you shouldn't feel emotions. You shouldn't, like, be stirred in your heart. That, you know, stay away from that <laughs> kind of thing. And it programmed you for years to be this, almost like, just this, I don't feel anything. I'm just this puppet. I just, I, I, I just intellectually kind of figure everything out. I read the word and everything is just out of natural understanding, natural trying to figure things out, natural perception and not out of Holy, not out of spiritual perception and not out of, you know, that thing. That's why this morning we are just like, let's just put on two songs. It's just like a little bit more like we can just soak a bit and just, you know, just get quiet a bit because everything in this life wants to distract us of like everything. I think, I think that's maybe the enemy's main plan is just to keep us busy in our minds, just to distract us from, from focusing <laughs> on Jesus, from focusing on God and focusing on the kingdom and just and being aware of his presence, being aware of the truth in the word and stuff like that. So I think if he can just keep us busy, busy the whole time in our thinking, then yeah, I think that's kind of one of the main things. So, so this morning... Like I said, too many times we live from here and not from God. So Luke 24, I'm going to read from verse 13. Okay, so this was now just after Jesus um, started appearing to people. He was risen. And I starts appearing to people, and um, we go on here in verse 13, it says, And behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And they talked there of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And, the, and he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? So, <laughs> verse 18. And the one of them whose name was Cleopas um, answered, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger to Jerusalem, and hast thou not known the things which are come to pass? The, there in these days, and he said them to them, what things? So Jesus is like really playing stupid here, yeah? like, like he, he hears them walking and being very sad and talking about everything that's happened, and now he's making as if he doesn't know, he, he's kind of like, what things? Like, what, what's been happening? Like, tell me, you know? And he, he said, and they said unto him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty indeed, and word before God, and all the people. And how the chief priests and all the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it has been he which should 
have redeemed Israel and beside all this, that today is the third day since these things were done. Yet, and certain women also of our company made us, made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. Verse 23, and when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the woman had said. But him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses, all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew near unto the village where they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. Now it's amazing, up till this point, they don't even still recognize mm -hmm. that it's him. Okay? They just think it's the stranger they are talking to. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Wow. And they said one to another, Did not our hearts burn? And this is the scripture I want to start off this. This is our main scripture for this morning. And they said one to another, Did not our hearts burn within us? while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures. Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us? So the first thing I, I said here, I said, spending time with Jesus will make your heart to burn or to be on fire. But like, like really, I mean, if you just listen to what happened there, this is what they communicated, they said, man, did our hearts not burn while he was speaking to us? And now I want to ask you, have you ever had that feeling like you you you're having quiet time or you you're driving and you're busy worshiping or um, you know you go somewhere and and you're just busy with God and you're busy in the word and suddenly you start feeling that I can't contain this. Come on, have you ever had that like I remember sometimes I would lie in the evening, you know, and I would like be, my mind would be on some stuff in the scripture or in, and there would just be these times where I feel like I want to explode, man, if I, if I don't, I don't know what to do, like you get so on fire, you, you feel like, yes, man, I'm on fire, I can't, I, I need to talk to someone, I need to share something or whatever, but there's just this burning inside me, okay? It's amazing when they spoke, they said, man, did not our hearts burn within us when, when, he, when he spoke with him? So I said, yeah, spending time with Jesus will make your heart to burn or for you to be on fire. Um, now, like I say, it's amazing when I grew up, it was almost like they, all, they always warned us not to get too emotional or not to get too carried away or you know it's like no 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 <laughs> and it's amazing like looking back then I think by myself no wonder we didn't really experience the Holy Spirit that much because we kind of blocked him the whole time because we didn't allow him to just have his way and to to do what he wants to do to open our hearts like to re really just um, yeah it was always crazy I remember in school we would go to some youth camps and then out of the blue, some of the students, there was just chaos, and we find out last week, we're like, what happened? He's like, no, and now this is like really traditional kind of church, where you, you don't really hear about the Holy Spirit, or speaking of tongues, or these things, and spontaneously, some of the kids, one evening, they were worshipping the Holy Spirit's power would break out, they would be laughing, rolling on the floor, drunk, uncontrollably, some of them speaking in tongues and then the people freaked out because they didn't know what to do because they weren't, it wasn't part of their paradigm and but it was almost like don't get too carried away don't get too much lost in the spirit because then you, you you're going in a weird territory and that's not where you should go um, 
anyway, it was always interesting for me. And it's amazing. Years ago, I remember coming out of that background, I would visit the church and I would go in and the worship music, I would stand there in this church and the worship music will begin. But I'm not talking about the first word. The first song, not even the first word is being sung. Just the first piano note. Just the start. And I started boiling my eyes. I started crying. And I'm like, what's going on with me? I don't understand this. That I feel embarrassed and I later leave the church. I go stand outside because, you know, like that, I sit there, I leave and I'm like, why? And then the lady would come to me and she's like, what? um, What's wrong? Yeah, what's wrong? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Um, and I told her, nothing is really wrong. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't, I don't know. She's like, but why are you crying there? I'm like, I don't know, I don't know. And literally, it wasn't even before someone sang a song. It was the first note or the second note. I mean, I'm like, what's happening here? <laughs> it, it's not natural. It doesn't make sense. So I go, and then she's like, no, don't worry, it's just the Holy Spirit working, and, and I'm like, okay, wow, okay. And, um, but it's amazing, you know, emotion. You know, suddenly there's tears. I mean, think about when the Spirit was poured out, the, the, it was joy, you know, it was. So you talk about, you talk about emotions, you know, it's amazing how the Spirit works with emotions. But we've always been kind of, no, 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 don't, don't. Get touched to that degree that you start crying or you start laughing or you start because no 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 stay away from emotions it's amazing anyway so uh well, excuse me <laughs> like I said what I'm telling you today almost goes opposite what I've been taught in my early <laughs> in my early years you know, don't live from the head, live from the heart. Like, I was always like, just everything just needs to make sense. I'm just figuring it out. I'm not really feeling that much. It's just about going through the motions, just intellectual kind of Christianity. Okay. It's amazing. And I didn't even search this up. But if you go to Concordance and you, you go look up, Jesus was moved with compassion. Yes. You'll find many scriptures on that, where it says he was moved. Come on and listen to those words. He was moved with compassion and he healed him. Come on, that's an emotion. That's a, that's a feeling. That's a love. For He was moved with that and then he went and healed him. It's amazing. It's an emotion. You know, like I, I, was, re- I was thinking of that. I'm thinking, wow, you know, he was actually moved with compassion. And then he, he, he acted out of that. He, he operated. Go with me to Hebrews 3. Okay, so we're talking about living from the heart. Now, <laughs> Hebrews 3. From the seven. It says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Now, I know if we've read this many times, but I want you to just see it in the, in the sense of what I'm speaking today is don't harden your hearts. You know, I've realized one's heart can be hardened. And I mean, I've experienced it myself. You go through seasons where, yes, yeah, yeah, <laughs> your heart gets hardened. And especially if you, I think if you, if you're not really in the work, if you're not really spending that much time, if you, you can easily get, I don't know, just situations, stuff can happen. Um, especially, I know, especially if you just live in sin and you just like ignore everything and you just <laughs> go on the wrong path. And then flip and hell, your, your heart really quickly gets hardened. Okay. Almost like you can't hear God's voice anymore. Or it feels to you that way. It's not like he's not speaking. It's not like he's not there. there but you're, it's almost like there's something over your heart. Okay. And we're going to speak about also the law. There's a veil upon your heart. Come on. It's all upon your heart. It's interesting. Not your head, your heart. Okay, so here we're reading, he says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost has said, today if you will hear his voice, 
Harden not your hearts, as is in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always err in their heart. Again, it's in their heart. And they have not known my ways. So I saw in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Again, the whole time it talks about the heart and hardening of the heart. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast up to the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as is in the provocation. Harden not your hearts. Wow. So, God doesn't want your heart to be hardened. Come on, he wants... He says in one place, I take away the heart of stone and I give them a heart of flesh. Okay, God wants you to have a heart of flesh, man. A heart of compassion, a heart that feels, a heart that is moved. Um, I was listening to a guy speak about how something like thankfulness. You know, he was speaking about, man, how thankful can he be of every... Like when he got in his quiet time, he just started thinking of thankfulness. And how God was just moving on him in such a way on thankfulness. He says, then one day you will sit in the restaurant or whatever or at home and there'll be his little sandwich in front of him or something. And he starts, tears starting rolling down his eyes because he starts getting, he starts realizing there are people that are dying of food right now. And I can have a, like a sandwich to eat. God, I'm so thankful of your good. You know, and he starts just, but they seem, you know, he just starts getting moved just by a simple sandwich because... He's so thankful because of his heart. You know, and that's someone that doesn't have a heart and heart. You know, I listen to that and I'm like, man, that guy's heart is sensitized. He's sensitive. It's not hardened. Um, now think about someone like David. You know, he he wrote all these songs and all these things for God. I mean, poetry, like, a, like think about it. Like, today you'd say that's a bit maybe feminine for a guy to write poetry. Just think about it. But... He wasn't at all. He was this warrior. I mean, this guy that that could kill a lion and could do stuff, you know, face Goliath. I mean, yuck, that wasn't the guy I would excel in with almost okay. And yet he wrote poetry, he wrote all these things, you know, he had this his heart was soft, you know, it was. And and I realize God wants us to 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 have that, to be to have a heart of flesh, okay? Now he's given us a heart of flesh. Now second Corinthians Let's go there, 2 Corinthians 3. From verse 7, it says, But if the ministration of death, the ministration of death, wow, written and engraved in stones, was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more does the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excels. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remains is glorious. Seeing that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. And not as Moses which put a veil upon his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, now it says, For until this day remains the same veil and taken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. Verse 15, But even to this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Don't say upon their heart. 
Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So this whole thing, now he says in verse 18, But we all with unopened face, beholding as in a glass, or in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory. But you see, before that whole thing about being changed to glory to glory of beholding, he wants the veil upon the heart to be gone. <laughs> okay? Uh, there mustn't be a veil on the heart. Because I believe that's how you see. That is how, that's, the entry, that's how you perceive, is with your heart, not with your, your intellect. <laughs> okay? And, and like I said, I've been trained for years to just be, you know, you're so trained to just figure everything out and just be intellectual. When it comes to the spirit and stuff, you're not going to be able to, if that's not the way it works, you can't with a natural mind understand. There will be stuff that doesn't even make sense to you, but you need to trust with your heart. It's by faith. It's not something you intellectually. So you need to learn how to flow with your heart, how to how to perceive with your heart, how to yeah. Okay, I hope it makes sense what I'm saying this morning. So I wrote here, I said, you cannot not be moved when in worship. <laughs> And then I said, yeah, you can, but then it means you're not doing it right. <laughs> okay. Come on, you cannot not be moved in way. I think the one thing that really irritates me like the most, and I mean, I, it's not about outward, it's not about display, but, you know, if someone would come to worship and, you know, you're worshiping God and they're just sitting there like, okay, we, worship, we just sing, but there's no connection, there's no art connection. It's a different thing if a person just sits, but there's, I mean, it's not, like I said, it's not about outward, but if he really connects, you know, if, if he enters that quiet place, if he, if he gets stirred in his heart, I mean, that for me is worship, like, come on, you, you're standing before the God of the universe, you, you, you speak, you, you're talking to him, you, I mean, how can you not be moved if you really do it, like, if, like I say, you can, but if you do it right, <laughs> You're gonna be moved. I mean, if you if if you experience Jesus, your heart's gonna burn. I mean, there's gonna be something. There's gonna be a passion, a burning. There's gonna be something in you that ignites you. You're not gonna be still. I mean, this is as I can feel. Say, can drink your finger in plug. I mean, you can so introverted and so quiet to so this as you will. But the moment that electricity flows through you, you can still sit it. Okay, you're gonna be energized. You're going to be opgewonde, you, something's going to happen. Your heart is going to dog so strong, but you're going to be shocked. <laughs> okay. I promise you, when you really get in God's presence, you, there are times you're also going to be shocked. Come on, because if, if, you, if you see God face to face, I mean, if you experience God, uh, so anyway, we need to learn how to enter that quiet place, to, live, to enter into the Spirit. Come on, God has created, he, he made a way open for us. He says, the veil has been torn. You can literally now boldly come into my presence. And it's amazing. We've got all these things. You know, but how many times, how, how much do we make use of, how much, come on, the way that Jesus opens up for us, how much do we actually <laughs> go there? Okay? Because if you go there and you come out there, I'm telling you, you can't be the same. Come on, your, your heart's going to burn. You've got to be different. You've got to have... People are going to see, this guy has been with Jesus. I mean, come on, you see it in the Bible, um, in this one place also where they said, we perceive that these people must have been with Jesus. I can't remember where that scripture is, but come on, if you've been with Jesus, it'll show. <laughs> it'll show, because it'll shine from the inside. There will be a difference in your kind. There will be it's just something different you will experience when you experience it. Okay. So I said, you cannot not be moved when in worship. You can, but then you're not connecting to Jesus. <laughs> because if you're connecting to Him, you will be moved. I said, then you're not really worshiping. Then it's just a religious practice. Okay? John 7. Go with me to John 7. Verse 37 and to 39. John 7, 37. In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and cried, saying, 
If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly, I'm say out of his belly, one of the translations says out of his heart, okay, so out of his heart, out of his belly, the fact is it's not out of the mind, it's out of the, your inside, out of the inner man, okay, out of the heart, or this one says out of the belly, shall flow rivers of living water. Okay, so out of the heart will flow rivers of of living water but this he spoke of the spirit which they that believed on him should receive for the Holy Ghost would not get given because that Jesus was not yet glorified so he makes it very clear what he's speaking about is he talks about this rivers of living water that's going to bubble up on the inside I know in another place it says to bubble up into eternal life it's going to be on the inside you know I just love it in one place sorry I'm off the track but when jesus was speaking to the lady at the well i remember he says he tells her about this living water and he says ask of me and i'll give you this living water so it's amazing what he is what he is there basically um telling her i can give this to you the next moment he says but the same thing i, I have and what i can give you you're gonna have and it's gonna be inside you and it's gonna be bubbling up Okay, so the same thing I've got, you're going to have. Okay. And then he makes it clear, he speaks about the Holy Spirit. But here it says, and then it says, streams of living water will flow, but it says from, he says, he speaks about the Holy Spirit, so it will flow, but it says from your heart, from the east, from your heart. So again, it's a move, it's something that comes from the heart. Okay. That's what I want to show you there. Proverbs 4.23. Proverbs 4.23. He says, guard your, heart with, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. <laughs> okay. Out of the heart again. The flow comes from the heart. Uh, if you go, that was John 4, 23. If you go to John 3. Let me say it's a flow. It's a flow. Okay. We just read that it's streams of living water, of rivers of living water, will flow from your heart. Okay, so it's a flow. The first thing I want you to do here is it's a flow. Okay. The second thing um, is in John 3, he also talks about the spirit and the movement of the spirit in John 3. From his one, he says, let's just read from his one. He says, there was a, name, a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that you do except God be, be with him. <coughs> Jesus answered and said unto him, Very, very, I say unto you, except the man be born again. Now, if you go read that, it's born from above. Okay, the original translation says he must be born from above. It actually doesn't say again, it just says from above. Okay. Except a man be born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And we're going to go into that just now, but we need to understand we are born from above. Okay. Except a man be born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Okay, we're going to speak about that just now. But marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. Then he says, the wind blows where it glisters, or where it wants. And thou hear the sound thereof, but you cannot tell where it comes and where it goes. So is everyone that is born of the spirit okay so the first, previous one we said it's a flow and it comes from the inside here we read it's almost like the wind you see someone that's born of the spirit is like the wind yeah yeah you where it comes and where it goes but it just happens and it just goes <laughs> okay um I, I think it's almost like revelation you know you're busy with stuff and suddenly just a thought pops or something and 
And before you know it, you're busy with some revelation that you got from the Spirit or from God. You don't know how it come. You don't know how it, it just happened, you know. And, or when you're busy with God's stuff, like something stuff just happened. Like you, you just stumble, not stumble upon, but you can't explain it. Like, how did you come up with that? No, I don't know, but it just happened. <laughs> okay. Come on, it's just the, the flow of the Spirit. Um but they don't know if it's yeah, or okay, I don't know, but it just happened, okay? So, and it's always an adventure with God, you always, yeah. Okay, so, um, <laughs> go with me to 1 Corinthians 2. Okay, 1 Corinthians 2. From this one it says and I brethren when I came to you came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of God for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified I just want to quickly check something before we go on um, <laughs> Yeah, I just want to read the Amplified, he says, in verse 1, he says, As for myself, brethren, when I came to you, I did not come proclaiming to you the testimony and evidence of mystery and mystery of the secrets of God concerning what he has done through Christ for the salvation of men in lofty words of eloquence of human philosophy and wisdom. Okay, so it's not human reasoning, human wisdom that I came to you now. Just to go back to where I was. Other translation. And yeah. Verse 2. For I determined not to know anything amongst you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. However we speak wisdom among those that are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, which are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known they would have not have crucified the Lord of glory. But it is written, I has not seen, he has not heard, nor have entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those that love Him. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God, the Spirit. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is from God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us by God. So it's only, he says, only the Spirit really knows. <laughs> he says, He will guide us into all truth. Okay, the Spirit of truth. Only the Spirit knows the deep things of God. But He reveals it to us. And we have received Him. So He can reveal those things to us. But it's only Him that really knows. Okay. The things we also speak, not in words which man wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of god for they are foolishness to him nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned but he who is spiritual judges all things yet he himself is rightly judged by no one wow this is cool for who can know oh man say i'm spiritual i'm not just <laughs> Okay. But who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Okay. Now let me ask you a question. We're just going a bit in a different thing now. But where are you right now? Tell me, where are you right now? Where are you right now? Are you not 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can ask. <laughs> okay, we are hungry right now. Thanks, Sam. Exit here of the stool. Okay, I'm here. I'm sitting here in my house. But that's not the only place I'm thinking. Ephesians 2. The 6 it says, uh, or this 5, let's go from this 4. But God which is rich in mercy because of his great love, which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And he has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his guidance towards us in Christ Jesus. Okay. So I'm also seated in heavenly places right now. Can I say right now? Right now. Come on, so where are you? Yes, I'm here, but I'm also seated in heavenly places. And it's amazing, we, we so folk, I think we, we just so, we, because we live by our senses and everything, we, what we see, what we feel, what we touch, this is so much more real for us that man, I'm sitting here. And we almost, hard, it's so amazing how little that other reality is sometimes real to us. But the fact is, I'm sitting right there, right now, at the same time. <laughs> okay. Now, I love to speak about this different reality, you know, the reality of the kingdom. You, you just live in a different reality. But for me, it's so much, I think we've got so much more to tap into and to understand. But okay. So, I'm seated in heavenly places right now. Um, if I say, I am a spirit, I have a soul and I live in a body. If I say I am a spirit, I, am a spirit. I have a soul and I live in a body. I mean, it doesn't mean, I mean, you're still a person, you're a whole, you're not just, you're all of those things together, okay, you're a body, you've got a body, soul and spirit. But what I mean is, when it comes to your identity, you know, the, he says, we know no man after the flesh anymore. You know, it says when you're born again, everything becomes new, um, you're a new creation, and that whole identity thing is based on your spirit, on your new man, your inner man. Your... So yes, you have a body and you have a soul, but I want you to realize like mainly you need to understand when it comes to your identity that you, you are a spirit being. Come on, God is spirit. <laughs> it's amazing how we, like spirit is also this spooky word like we grew up with, like spirit is spook. Mm. And it's freaky and it's weird. It's, it's amazing, but God is a spirit. Come on, you've believed in a spirit your whole life. Your helper is a holy spirit. <laughs> Come on. Uh, everything is, it's amazing how much everything is just spirit, 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 spirit. If you just read the Bible, it's just all spirit. Uh, and we, we think it's weird, but okay, anyway. So, it's just our natural thinking. We need to understand we are spirit beings. Um, we live in a body, but I mean, and that's amazing. Once we get our minds out of the, not out of the way, but once we still our, once we take our thoughts capture, once we, if I can put it that way, once we, I think, let go of distractions and we really just um, quiet our minds in a sense, not, but yeah, in a sense that we stop thinking naturally and we just, in the if we really, get who we are, then we're going to start operating in, in stuff that, man, we, uh, if we live from that place, okay? But we can, it's, all of us can, it's just, yeah. like I said, we're so distracted by so many things, but that is truly who we are, we are a spirit. So, where am I to live from? Is my, am I to live from here, or am I to live from here? I think we read enough scriptures this morning to understand there's a living from from this, okay, that we, we can do. Um, so I said, if I can start stilling this thing, <laughs> and I can start just being more aware and start living from this, I think that's a good place to be. And that's why I said, that's why quiet times are so important. I think that's when you you switch off everything. Come on, that's what God, with Jesus says, is go into your, what does he say in your, 
in a room and shut out everything out like come on let it be like just in the dark so you can switch everything off and you can just focus on the still small voice you can focus on what he shows you you can focus on that's where he wants us to be because that's where you grow because that's where you truly forget about 10 minutes from now you forget about history and suddenly your mind gets quiet and you, you start you start realizing who you are that's when you spend time with truly with him as you know uh, that's where we need to to be and what we need to practice more and more okay it's just is living from that place okay i hope it makes sense when i say I, I, like i said i'm this morning i don't know even how i was going to get this message across but i'm trying my best but i think you you're getting what i'm trying to say okay now let's let's just go in the last because this is something i also want to speak, speak about but i think it's going to kind of jump into this um go with me to colossians 1. if i say i am holy <laughs> that that for me is also um a concept that you know when you've heard from small that god is holy you know, and you've got a concept of what that means. God is holy, and we know He's holy. We know the angels sing holy, holy, holy. Um, and it's amazing that when you start reading here, that He says you are also holy. Okay, that's the way He sees you because of what He did now. So, Colossians one. So I went to. I don't want to jump ahead of myself, but let's first read the scriptures, and then I'm gonna quickly say about that. Colossians one. From verse 21, it says, And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now has he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death. Okay, now we know all this. He did all this. Why? It says, To present you holy and blameless and above approach in his sight. It's amazing he did this to present you holy in his sight so in his sight you are holy okay if you go to Colossians sorry Ephesians 5 it says also the same thing Ephesians 5 verse 26 or this yeah, man. let's just read verse 25 as well this is powerful. You're going to see now when I jump to John 17 just how powerful this is. But in Ephesians 5, verse 25 to 27, he says this Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify, that's where it's important, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word that he might present her to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that she should be holy and without blemish that's a second verse that tells you he present that you are holy you've been made holy okay <laughs> you've been washed by the word you've been made holy and man, when I, I hear that, I'm thinking, it's a, how many teachings do you get on that, that you are holy? Not a lot. I mean, you hear people say God is holy and you hear all these things, but how many times do you hear that you also have been made holy, okay? But what does that mean? You know, because the word holiness has got a bigger meaning than just, I don't know, just, just holy, <laughs> okay? One of the meanings, if you go, what's interesting, one of those meanings of the word is to be set apart or to be consecrated. Okay, for a purpose. But you've been set apart, you've been consecrated for a, pur a specific purpose. Um, in the week when I had this discussion with um, Pastor Stewart, and he also mentioned about how they would use items in the Old Testament and then, you know, it would be declared holy. It's still the same item. But afterwards, it's, it's got a certain purpose for God. It's been separated for this purpose. Okay? It's been 
it's uh, sanctified, what's the word? It's been um, consecrated or sanctified. Now, if you go, now let's end here with John 17. Because, man, I, when I start realizing, look, man, I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. And I want you to hear this this morning. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. It says, as Jesus is in this, was in this world and not of this world, at that same measure, you are in this world, but you're not of this world. The, now, Jesus knew nothing could really have a hold on him in this world because he's not of this world. I think the more we realize we're not of this world, so nothing in this world can really... In, I can go through stuff, but I can rule and reign over everything because I'm not of this world, okay? John 17... Um, let's see, okay, I haven't written down the scripture where I want to read. Let me just find it now. Um, let's go for to um. From the. Let's read from verse 13. But now I come to you. Now this is Jesus praying for us. And this is what it makes it so amazing. Is this whole thing. He's praying directly for us. Um, he's praying for the, the, the people that were standing there. And he says. And also those that will believe. Through the word. Will believe. So it's for every believer. This prayer is for every, every one of us. Um, verse 13, but now I come to you, Jesus is now praying, and, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I've given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of, it's, you know, in case you missed it the first time and you did not hear it, Jesus repeats it. He says, they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. So set them apart by your truth, because your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. What's so powerful for me is Jesus says, set them apart. Come on, we've read to us, you've been holy, you've been made set apart, consecrated in his sight. You are holy. Here he prays, he says, set them apart through your truth. Your word is truth. That's why I love to speak about living in a different reality, because if you live in truth, you're living separate from the world. Come on, the world system, everything. That's why um, I love to speak about kingdom and kingdom reality. Because you literally live in a different reality than the world. Okay, you live in God's kingdom. You live in, in relationship with, like, your whole existence on earth is different from a guy that is not born again. Okay, you've got this inheritance, this thing you live in, and it's different. Come on, and you live by faith, not by sight. You... You don't look at the scene, you look at the unseen. I mean, it's all a total different life. But here it says, sanctify, set them apart by your truth. Your word is truth. Okay? So, Jesus says, here is the truth. I want you to set them apart by your truth. By your reality. By, set them apart. Sanctify them. Make them separate from the rest. Because they're in the world, but they're not of the world. I've given them the truth, now set them apart by your truth. And then so after the more I realize this, that I'm in this world, I'm not of this world. Um, my true identity, I'm a spirit being, I'm I'm one with him, with the Father. Yes, I live in a body, I've got a soul, but I mean that's not I'm in heavenly places. Come on, we've got our conversation in heaven. How many scriptures are there saying that we're born from above? You know, I love that. Um Revelation, somewhere it says, Jerusalem from above, which is the mother of us all. And one day I was reading that, I'm thinking, 
what does that mean? And then I'm like, wait a minute, you come from your mother. So I guess that's just another way of saying you're born from above. <laughs> we're born from above. We, the Bible says, we, what's that? Yo, we have our conversation in heaven. I'm seated in heavenly places right now. Just like Jesus could go to Nicodemus and say, um, no one has ascended up to heaven, but he, he which came down from heaven, which is the Son of Man, which is in heaven. You see, Jesus was saying, hey, I'm standing right in front of you, but I'm actually, at the same moment, I'm in heaven. And I think we don't understand, with the natural mind, we're like, wow, that doesn't make sense. But we can say the same now, because we see it in heavenly places right now. We can speak like Jesus spoke. You can go to someone and say, hey, I guess van der van it's got word in God. But I'm in heaven. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't, but it's true. We see it in heavenly places. And after he was resurrected, everything in us given us to be part, to have that same authority, have that same power, have that same everything. We are seated with him. We're not seated in a different place than where he's seated right now. He's seated in the same place. You know, and I think the more we realize that, that man, I'm in this world, I'm not of this world. I'm actually seated there. That is just as real as this reality here. The more I realize that, and I've been separated by His truth. I've been sanctified. I've been set apart. So nothing in this world necessarily has to have an, in, an influence on me the more I understand where I'm from. So the economy doesn't matter. Oh, you know, it's a book of our fun. Who cares? I'm from above. Come on, everything. I mean, if you start speaking from that place. So I hope it makes sense. I know I kind of mix two messages there in one from the heart and... But I think it kind of fits together because we need to realize who we are. Live from the spirit, live from the heart, and not by the sense, not what we see and what we, yeah. And the more we spend time there, the more our hearts burn. And the more we, we live, man, people think you're weird. Like, why? Because you tap into a different reality. You live from a different place. You live from heaven. You don't live from, from what he's going to say to but. <laughs> Come on, you don't live from the petrol price going up and down. That's not the reality you live from. You live in a total different reality. So I hope it made sense this morning, but um, yeah, let's just pray. Let's just pray. Let's just pray. Father, thank you for the reality that you've brought us into. Thank you that we're born from above. I thank you, Father, we've been translated out of darkness into your kingdom. Lord, we are seated in heavenly places. We're seated right by your side. We are, we are in you. Our, we are dead and our lives are hidden with you. Father, thank you for that reality. Thank you, Lord, that you've purchased us. You've cleansed us on the cross. You've paid for our sins, Lord, you've We've been buried with you, but we've also been resurrected with you. We are seated with you in heavenly places. Father, thank you for that reality. Lord, we live in the reality that that some, some days it just sucks. <laughs> Everything in this world. And we sit with so much hurt. We sit with so much pressure. We sit with so much things going on. We sit with so much distractions. We sit with so many things that wants to, to rule and reign us and to rule over our minds and to rule over us. But oh, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will just come and just come and take us over. Just come and make us more aware of you and your presence, Lord, and everything that's going on. Thank you that you quiet us, you quiet our minds. As we focus on you, Lord, you, you still us, you still us. And you make with the Spirit of the Lord, He says, freedom. Thank you that no fear can stand in your presence. No worry, no anxiety, Lord. You give us perfect peace. You give us your joy. Father, and thank you for peace that goes above understanding. Lord, and that we can have access, that we have free access to all that heaven has, Lord. That we can enter boldly in your presence. We can enter boldly into your throne room. But Lord, thank you, we can start living from that place. It's not just a place where we just go and visit once in a while, Lord. But it's a place that we can actually start living from and be our reality. Father, thank you that 
as we just open up our hearts and we just directly to you more and more Lord we just open up our hearts Lord for the move of the spirit Lord you're going to move more and more through us you're going to Thank you, Lord, for just making us more sensitive, Lord, for the Spirit, for your Holy Spirit, Lord, that um, we become sensitive, that we also become moved with compassion, that we get moved with with joy and with peace. And thank you, Lord, that the, the fruit of the Spirit just bubbles up and just takes over, Lord, and that that becomes a new reality, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, yeah, we exit. <laughs> <laughs> awesome.